Hey everyone and welcome. Feeling swamped by Medicare enrollment? You're not the alone. I'm here to cut through the confusion and guide you through the process step by step, whether you're turning 65, coming off an employer plan, or I'm going to dive into exactly what to do. The process of enrolling into Medicare is the major part of Medicare you may be facing and most are confused by. So what if you're turning 65? So how can I qualify to automatically enroll into Medicare Part A and Part B Kelby? Most people get Part A automatically through Social Security if you've chosen to draw your Social Security and you're turning 65. So if you've signed up for Social Security, you'll be receiving your Part A and Part B on your birth date month on the first day of that month. If you turn 65 on the first day of that month, your, your Medicare actually begins on the prior month on the first. So to make sure you understand exactly what I said, when you uh, have a birth date month and it's say 30 days in a month and you're looking at, okay, my birth date is on the 18th, Kelby, uh, when is my Medicare Part A and Part B going to start? Your Medicare Part A and Part B effective dates are gonna be the first day of that month. And just to recap what I said about the first day, if your birth date falls on the first day of say August the 1st, your Part A and Part B are gonna start the prior month on July 1st, and that's just how the rule works. If it's on the first, it's a prior month. Second through the 31st of any month, it's going to be on the first day of that, that month. So that's kind of an explanation of, of understanding. A lot of times people will say, well, my birth date is on this day, so it has to start the following month. It actually is the first day of that month, regardless if your birth date is on the 30th or 31st, it does not matter, it starts on the first. Stick around, I'll be back in just a second. So now, what to do if you're on an employer-based plan? I'm glad you asked, and let me go over your options. So what if you're turning 65, you're on an employer plan, and you're wanting to know really what the options are for you? Well, a couple things. One, if you're turning 65 and you're on an employer-based plan, there's really two categories of employer groups. There's employer groups that have 19 employees or less, or there's employer groups that have 20 employees or more. For you guys that may be working for a small company that has 19 employees or less, what will happen is your Medicare Part A and Part B, you'll actually enroll into Medicare Part A and Part B because they'll be in the first payer position and your employer group is in the second payer position. If you go, if you do choose not to enroll into Medicare Part A and Part B because you've listened to a friend, family member, or have gotten misguided information uh, from somebody else and they tell you not to do anything, what's gonna happen is a lot of times when the bill is sent to Medicare, obviously you're not gonna have Medicare Part A and Part B and it's gonna pass through to the employer. And sometimes the employer can kick that bill back to you and say you, you owe 100% of it because there wasn't anybody sitting in the first payer position. So you need to be very aware that if you're on an employer group, 19 persons or less, you need to enroll into your Medicare Part A and Part B, even if you're gonna to continue to work. So that means you're gonna pick up your Part B premium, you're gonna pay that standardized Part B premium, or it's gonna be an adjusted uh, Part B premium based on your IRMA, your income earnings from two years prior. So if you're a higher income earner, you may have to pay a higher Part B premium, but you're gonna to have to take out Part A and Part B. The other option is if you're on uh, a group plan that's 20 employees or more, you can actually not even worry about signing up for Part A and Part B. You can actually just go and be on your employer plan. Sometimes in certain circumstances, some people choose to enroll into Medicare Part A. The only caveat with that is you need to be very aware when you have an HSA, if you enroll into Medicare Part A uh, and you go and stay on your employer plan, you can actually get penalized for not converting that HSA into a HRA, a health retirement account. So there's some rules and regulations around HSAs and HRAs and exactly how that works. And if you're gonna stay on the employer plan and you have an HSA and you wanna to continue to contribute to that HSA, you don't want to enroll into Part A or Part B. You can actually just wait and then when you retire and you're coming off your employer plan, that's when you would walk through the process of enrolling into Part A and Part B without any penalties. And we cover a lot of that information uh, in videos like this and go over how the penalties and things like that work. So that's very important that you know the, the two caveats. One is 19 or less, you need to enroll into Medicare Part A and Part B. One is I'm staying on my employer plan and you have options. So based on that employer plan, we then look at do you need to stay on the employer plan? Is the premium, the deductible, the coinsurance, the cost pay, and the structure uh, in a situation where that is an excellent employer plan, you need to stay on that until you get ready to retire. Or 
Sometimes it's a very high cost to be uh, on that employer plan. It's better to drop that employer plan, to continue with your employment, to drop the employer insurance and to go on Medicare and choose a health plan option. That is all subject to some moving details. We actually take the time and analyze each client that, that calls in to look at their case to see if they really need to do uh, what we would suggest and then to say, hey, you need to stay on that plan or it would actually benefit you uh, monetarily, coverage-wise, and some, some moving parts that we cover with you as well. So if you have any questions about that, it can be confusing, like my employer group, I believe is this, or I believe is this, what should I do? That's a good opportunity for calling in. If you'll stick around, we're gonna cover some more important information in just a second. So let's cover when you should sign up for your Medicare Part B. What if you're coming off an employer plan? There's a seven month window, let's refer to it as your safety zone. And I'm gonna explain why I call this the safety zone. So Medicare doesn't call this a safety zone. I'm gonna tell you exactly what I like to refer to as the safety zone area. When you're coming off an employer plan three months prior to when you're gonna have your Part A and or Part B start, you can begin the process to sign up for your Part A and Part B, or if you're already on A and you're signing up for Part B, I always say three months prior, the month of, and three months after. It is the same process that if you were going on to original Medicare at 65 years of age and you're choosing a health plan and you weren't working at all, or if you are working, I always say this, this kind of safety zone is when you can know that I'm not gonna get penalized for not having drug coverage. I'm not gonna get penalized for Part B issues. It's basically this, this time frame that works for almost every scenario, except for if you have credible coverage and you're coming off credible coverage when it comes to your drug plan, you will want to have a drug plan in place within 63 days of a lapse of coverage. And if you don't and you wait, you're gonna be penalized uh, Part B penalization fee that's 1% towards the National Prescription Drug Plan average. We have a video explaining what that is. You can watch that or you can always call in and ask questions. But I like to say do everything three months prior to coming off in your employer plan. If you, if you allocate the time over here to have everything start effectively when your Part A and Part B and or Part B only is going to go into effect, it eliminates all the penalties. But the safety zone almost catches every situation. Now there's also this eight month rule that's called a special election time. And this means if you come off the employer plan and you didn't enroll in your Medicare Part B, Medicare gives you this eight month window to enroll without having any kind of penalty on your Part B premium. Now, if you wait and choose to wait after that, you actually have to wait to the general election period, which we talk about, which is January through March the 31st, and then your Part B coverage doesn't start to July 1st of the following year, and then you're subject to all the Part B costs, and you don't have Medicare A and B, which allows you to enroll into like a Medicare supplement, a Medicare Advantage. You can enroll into a drug plan, but really your medical costs is what's gonna really, you know, what I call punch somebody in the stomach when you really have high costs when it comes to going into the hospital or having surgeries, going to the doctor, specialists, and things like that. So this eight month rule is there. It's a general rule, but it really, we pull it back to 63 days or prior. If you don't have your drug plan in place when your Part A and Part B goes into effect and you're coming off your employer plan, you're gonna get penalized for drug coverage. And again, if we go back to the safety zone area of seven months, if we just think of if I enroll into everything and have my plan chosen three from three months to effective date, you're gonna always eliminate any potential penalties beyond when your Part A and Part B effective dates go into effect. So just always remember, if my A and B is going into effect, I want to try to make sure I can have everything done prior to that, then I don't have to worry about any of these effective rules, regulations, or penalties that could be, I could be experiencing if I don't make this decision of getting it done early. Now, if you procrastinate and you wait, and you wait to the month of, or you just didn't know and you're just watching a video like this and you go, hey, what, what's going to happen to me? Call because there's different rules for different situations and we can walk you through what exactly is going to help you most to eliminate any kind of penalty and also explain how Medicare the rules work so you're educated on making a wise decision. Don't panic. Stop. Make a collective call you know, and, and have some information that we're going to provide. We're going to provide you some information, but also collect some information and determine what exactly do you need to do during this process if you've waited too long. 
and explain uh, what happens if you have waited too long and even if you're past the eight month window. All right, so now let's talk about some, some forms that you have to sign when you're coming off an employer-based plan. Now, if you're turning 65 and you're coming off an employer-based plan and you're going on to original Medicare A and B, starting on your, your birth date month when you turn 65, you don't really have to do these forms because you have a really a an election period, an initial election period where you've you've chosen to retire, you're coming off your employer plan, and because all this stuff is in the past and your birth date month is gonna actually establish your Part A and Part B effective dates and when you enroll into, into your Medicare health plan of your choice, whether it be a Medicare supplement, a Medicare Advantage, and or just a standalone drug plan, you're not gonna to have to do these forms. But past that time period, depending if you enroll into your Part A and Part B, and you're on an employer-based plan or you're not, there are some forms that you're gonna to have to have signed. One is called the L-564 form, which basically verifies to Medicare and your health plan that you've had credible coverage. It has some dates on it. It has some, some specific dates that need to be filled out a specific way. And a lot of times we see people that are trying to do this form on their own will mess it up. We even see this form is actually can be taken to most HR managers and a lot of times it's kind of a flip of a coin. The HR manager gets the dates wrong on it and then you submit it and then it holds up your Medicare Part A and Part B from going into effect and there's some hold up because of the paperwork not being done correctly. We always say if you're unaware of how to fill the form out correctly, give us a call. We'd love to be able to walk you through the process. We actually fill the form out for you and with you send it to you, we'll collectively work with you and the HR manager to make sure they get it signed correctly and everything's done correctly. The other form is, the 40B form is actually when you have had Part A and you're, you're enrolling into your Part B, you have to do what's called a 40B form. And on that 40B form, the form itself is very basic, just very general information. There'll be a copy that pops up on the screen here of the L-564 form, and then also the 40B form. But on both of those are general information, the dates and time on the L-564 is very important. The 40B, what's important is, on the second page, gonna, they're, they're gonna ask a question about what exactly needs to happen. Now in that space, you need to be able to say, I'm coming off an employer-based plan, effective on this date, I need to have my Medicare Part B start on effective this date. And you need to have that terminology in there because when you submit that form, they're gonna look at your general information, your name, information, social security number, and they're gonna look down at this second part of this form and it's telling them what you're wanting to be able to do. So that 40B provides direction toward what is actually happening. And there's some additional information and stuff that we can go into a lot of times with the client depending on the situation, but that really explains how the L564 form uh, works and why you have to have it and then the 40B form. And then also if you had been getting a credible coverage letter or you're like, hey, I, like there's circumstances where we uh, instruct the client to call the, the employer and ask for a, what's called as a credible coverage letter. And that letter is spelled out a certain way. We'll actually have a copy of that below in the description below. So if you're having to get a credible coverage letter, we'll also have the L-564 form and the 40B form. So we'll have those below. If you do have some, some questions about those, reach out to us because we'll walk you through exactly what you need and why you need that. So guess what? If you're still confused, no worries. Whether you need Medicare Part A and B or just Part B or have a different situation, I want to cover some of the key factors that are important for you to understand that are basics but may be confusing still. Age. Are you turning 65 or already past that? You'll become eligible for Medicare at the age of 65. Now I'm going to explain exactly what that means to you. So when you turn 65, it's kind of like this golden age that allows you to go on to Medicare. So anybody that's coming up the age of 65, Medicare looks at that age as kind of the pivoting point of you deciding exactly how you're gonna get your health insurance moving forward. You're gonna go ahead and enroll into your Medicare Part A and Part B, or you're not. Now if you've already uh, become eligible for your Social Security and you begin to draw your Social Security at 62, you actually are gonna be put on the Medicare Part A and Part B automatically. If you've signed up for your Social Security prior to your 65th birthday, about 100 days prior, you're gonna get your Medicare Part A and Part B red, white, and blue card, and you're also gonna have some information on there whether or not you wanna to continue to keep that or deny both parts, Part A, Part B. Again, going back into the Part A, if you have an employer plan, you can keep that unless you have an HSA and you're paying into the HSA and continue to, to pay into it past uh, 65 years of age, then you need to turn down your Part A and Part B. And again, if you have questions about that, 
reach out. But when you turn 65, this is this golden era and this pivoting point of making health decisions or health plan decisions de determined by really a lot of moving factors. Now, a lot of people are working past the age of 65. If you're confused about that, you can al always reach out. We'd love to be able to explain that. Now, let me also talk about disability. Some of you guys may qualify for Medicare based on disability. And disability works like this. There's, you know, SS. SSDI, which is Social Security Disability Insurance, and that's gonna basically start when you've been deemed in front of a judge disabled from being able to work. And you may have had a work accident or a health-related situation where you're not gonna be able to work any longer. And so all of a sudden, you're gonna qualify for disability. You're gonna start drawing the income. And then on the 25th month of when you qualified for that SSDI, you're gonna automatically be, be put on Medicare Part A and Part B. Now that is when you can actually make a health plan decision to enroll into some form of Medicare health plan. Most people prior to the age of 65, just because of the cost of Medicare supplements, they usually will enroll into a Medicare Advantage plan that will cover their Part A, Part B services, Part D, and then provide the additional benefits like dental, hearing, vision, and things like that. It's a great plan option for people that are transitioning from an employer-based situation, they are, they've worked, they're, they're being qualified for disability on the 25th month or the 24th month and beyond, they're gonna qualify for Part A and Part B. And a lot of times we will help them enroll into a Medicare Advantage plan because it's gonna lower the cost of the risk on original Medicare Part A and Part B and provide them some additional service, a lot like the employer-based plan they probably were on before. Now, when they turn 65, they're gonna have this whole new eligibility time. They can go to a Medicare supplement. They can change their plan. There's all types of moving parts. Again, when you turn 65, it's a pivoting time of what you can do. So hopefully that, that helps you understand both if you're becoming eligible for Medicare and then also if you're disabled and you have questions about disability, we'll have some additional videos and stuff about disability that may help you as well. Give me just a second, I'm gonna finish up on one last point. So something else to think about, if you have specific medical conditions that may influence your, your plan choices, a lot of people that have certain health conditions or chronic need conditions can actually qualify for Medicare Advantage uh, special need plans or chronic uh, need plans. Now, there's a whole variety of plans out there, and so if you fall into certain chronic conditions or health conditions and you're inquiring about these, make sure that your primary care doctors are covered, your specialists are covered, your care of everything that you need are covered, and know that in metro areas, like again, we live in the Middle Tennessee area around Nashville, Tennessee, and, and there's a metro area of access to doctors, specialists, hospitals, and some of the best care in the nation. So if you live in a l larger metro area, a lot of times access to care for doctors, specialists, and things like that, and a chronic need plan can be specifically tailored toward people with certain health conditions that are good. And then also for people that are on fixed and low income, they can qualify for what they call as dual eligible plans for Medicare Advantage, which help people that are on Medicare and Medicaid, and those plans can have additional, um, what I call continuity of care that helps them uh, just empower the doctor and empower the health plan to help uh, really manage their care and do some things that are, that are specifically tailored towards that, that uh, income uh, demographic of people and a lot of times their health conditions and things like that. So if, you're, if you fall into kind of that spectrum of you're looking at like, hey, my health has certain needs, is there plans tailored toward these types of situations? There could be and, and it could be well uh, worth your, your time just to be able to give us a call or call somebody that you trust. And hopefully that's going to be us and ask questions so we can help guide you through whether or not you need a certain plan specifically tailored towards your chronic health conditions or what would be best for you. Stick around, I'm going to finish up. So Medicare is confusing but it's not as scary as it, it seems if you have some basics down correctly. But paperwork isn't everyone's favorite. That's why we get a ton of calls just to help with this process. It's hard to trust the process when it's confusing. And as I like to say, the devil's in the details, and so the details matter. So if you're frustrated and don't want to handle these details, I get it, that's why we're here. If you want to skip the stress and ensure everything really is done right, we can handle the entire process by navigating the enrollment steps. We'll guide you through each step. Make sure you meet the deadlines and avoid mistakes. And then understanding the forms. We'll decipher those confusing L-564 and 40B forms and help you step through that. And then choosing the right plan will analyze your needs, budget, 
uh, to, accordingly to those needs and find the plan that's best for you and then help you fill out the paperwork correctly, making sure you decipher it correctly. We also invite you to watch our free Medicare Made Simple workshop for a comprehensive overview of everything I just covered with you. You can contact us directly for personalized assistance and get started on a stress-free enrollment today. We also provided some, some content and links below in the description. I ask that you take advantage of that, guys, and I will see you on the other side and have a great day.